everyone it's me Mairead here and I'm back again and for this week's video if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail and title it is my December wrap up it is the final wrap up of 2022 I'm gonna say it what a year it's been wow I've said it about four times already but it's the final wrap up of the year um and in a few days will be 2023 so crazy honestly crazy I'll just get into it and I'll tell you the books that I read this month. Hold on, give me two seconds, I need to open up my notes. Okay, so the first book that I read this month was Final Serenade by N.N. Britt. And this is the first book in a series um, and it follows a woman called Cassie and she is a music journalist and she has been given the permission to interview um, a man called Frankie um, and he was a very, very famous musician. He's sort of making a comeback because he had an injury, he'd had an accident. Um, so now he's making a comeback and this is why she gets to interview him because it's like the comeback and all this. Um, they meet at the interview, she gets invited to an after party, she goes to the after party, she sees him again. And then he emails her being like, do you want to go out on a date? They start going out on dates. He's a fair bit older than her. Not like, well, he is just a bit older than her. Um, she has other stuff going on in her life with her brother and her mum and all this sort of stuff. So um, that's the sort of gist of the book. It ends on a cliffhanger. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know if I'll read the rest of the series. Uh, I don't really know if I care loads what happens to the, to the characters. I don't really know if I care if they get together I, f I mean they obviously will get together but I don't really know if I care what happens aside from that really so um I probably maybe won't pick them up again uh but I enjoyed it like it was good enough I think I gave it a three or four stars I think it was like a 3.5 sort of stars for me I enjoyed it it like wasn't terrible it just I probably just don't really care enough about the characters um I'll tell you the tropes. It is an age gap and it's also falling in love with a famous person, which is one of my favourite tropes. I wrote a whole book of that trope of falling in love with a famous person. Um, and it's also on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read it um, on there. And yeah, that's the first book. The next book is The Devil Gets His Due by Elizabeth O'Rourke. This was the fourth book in this series. I can't actually remember the series name. Uh, and you've seen these characters before but now like you're being reintroduced to them you don't have to read any of the other books on so this book because truly i didn't actually know where i'd remember these characters from i really didn't remember them but um it follows a woman called keely and she is helping to arrange her best friend's engagement party and she's arranging it and she's arranging it with a man called Graham who's like her best friend's fiance's brother along those lines a bit convoluted but that's the general gist um they really don't like each other she thinks he's really boring he thinks she's really irresponsible and like a bit ridiculous um and basically they are at this engagement party organizing this engagement party and they um they sleep together and then they see it together again, but this time it's in Vegas and they have a shotgun wedding and it's set uh, a few months later, maybe like three, four months later, and Keely finds out that she's pregnant. Um, so Graham obviously gets told and then Graham moves in with her and she really, she doesn't like hate him. She just, they just don't really get along loads. They aren't really similar people. The banter between the two of them is just like the most amazing thing ever. I love this book. This is one of my favourite books of the whole year. Um, I really, really like this whole series. Devil Gets, um, I really like this whole series by Elizabeth O'Rourke, sorry. Uh, just amazing. I read the first book in the series last October. Um, and yeah, from there on out, I loved it. I need to read Elizabeth O'Rourke's other books, but I haven't done it yet, so... And then the, oh, the tropes, I'll tell you, it's accidental pregnancy. It's, I guess, slightly enemies to lovers. It's really, really great, like witty banter. And it's also on Kindle Unlimited. So you can read it if you have Kindle Unlimited for not very much money. Um, and then the next book, and this was also one of my favourites of the year. I include it in my favourites of the year 2023 book video that I posted. So that will be somewhere on this channel like somewhere in this video i'll include it somewhere <laughs> or it'll be in the description uh it's blood orange by corinna halley and this is the first book in a duet i'm pretty sure but i don't know when the second book is meant to come out i think it's meant to come out today but 
I don't think that's happening anymore at the minute. I'm sending lots of really big positive vibes and like a lot of love to um, Kona Hao though because I think she's sort of going through it at the minute. So I'm sending a lot, a lot of love um, and I'll patiently wait for the second book in the series. <laughs> um, but this one follows a woman called Dahlia and she is a witch and she has been sent to murder a vampire called Baltu and he is basically what the whole idea is sort of like he is what Bram Stoker based Dracula on he's like Dracula in theory a bit it's that sort of play on the idea of that um but she has been sent to kill him and in this whole ruse she has been sent to a music school in Italy and where he's a professor and she is a student and I can't actually remember what is it the organ she's learning how to play? She's learning how to play a bit of an obscure, or she's playing in a bit of an obscure um, instrument. And basically, they sort of start to like end up falling in love, but she's still keeping this really big secret that she's a witch um, and that she's meant to be murdering him. And it ends on a really, really great cliffhanger. I am so excited for the second book. Whenever it comes out, I will be gobbling that down, like, so quickly. I read it on Kindle Unlimited and then I bought the Kindle version and then I also bought the paperback because well the hardback because the hardback is the most stunning thing I've ever seen I think the covers are like gorgeous I'm actually quite jealous of her covers I think they're like amazing it's also my favorite ever adult vampire romance I've read one or two other adult vampire romances and they haven't really done much for me but this one did everything for me it was amazing so she's also written another like vampire romance uh which I think I will go and read but as of right now I don't know maybe I'll make that my next read I don't know I'm really in a bit of a, like a I'm in a sort of a slumpy situation where I don't really know what I want to read uh but yeah anyway I'll tell you the tropes it's a paranormal vampire romance it's very very smutty it's also a bit dark and it's also a situation of um like a student teacher and I suppose like an age gap it's also on Kindle Limited gals so the next book that I read was Tis the Season for Revenge by Morgan Elizabeth and this was a Christmas novel. Um, it follows one called Abby and she gets dumped on Halloween by her boyfriend of four years and as a way of getting revenge, hence the title, she decides that she's going to um, date her ex-boyfriend's boss and get invited to the Christmas holiday party. She's going to walk in on her his boss's arm and it's going to be like a big F you essentially <laughs> and what she doesn't like entail or plan on happening is falling in love with him so that's the sort of like general gist of the book it's really sweet it's quite soft it's really not too long it's like 200 and something pages um just a very like sweet nice christmas novel i'm going through this quite quickly because when i did a whole reading vlog of them which i'll leave down below and secondly i don't think very many people are going to be reading christmas books anymore now so I'll go through these um and it's an age gap and it's on Kindle Limited too and the next book and another Christmas novel was The Holly Dates by Brittany Cherry and I don't know if it's Brittany C Cherry or just Brittany Cherry because here it's Brittany Cherry but um anyway I really like this I want to read um other the other books that this author has written because I've seen a lot of people recommending them um so I will pick them up I just need to get around to it and this one follows Holly if you couldn't tell by the title and basically she has had a really bad Christmas um and it gets set 11 months later and she is now trying to find a boyfriend or rather someone to take home to go home with her for her Christmas dinner and like her Christmas holidays um so she starts conducting these dates in a restaurant it's all the same restaurant and the owner of the restaurant and the barman is a man called Kai and they also live in the same building together um and he he basically starts giving his feedback, they start getting close, etc, etc. It's all around Christmas, it's very sweet. Um, it's just, it's also slightly short, it's like 200 or something pages, not super long. And it's on Kindle Unlimited too. Um, the next book was my first DNF for the month, not my last though, my first DNF was Book for the Holidays by Chelsea Curto. Uh, it wasn't badly written, to put that quite bluntly, it really wasn't badly written. I just wasn't super interested. That was all it really was, I just really was not really interested in it um if you want to read it i would recommend it uh just because i didn't like it doesn't mean that other people might won't like it so um i never want to say say don't read a book or just because i haven't liked it you might not like it you might like it um so either way it just didn't really 
do much for me uh but it wasn't badly written so anyway and the next book and the final christmas theme book was the partridge and the pregnancy pregnancy by will and ash and this was a very sweet christmas novella um it was the fourth book in the series i'd read the other no it was the third book in the series and i'd read the other two it follows a series of brothers um and it was just a really quick novella um, it follows Eva and she basically sleeps with her old college boyfriend um, and then she gets pregnant. That is essentially the story of it. She's trying to figure out what they're going to do. It's, there's really not much to add. It was on Kindle Unlimited and I enjoyed it. Um, the next book is Broken Whispers by Neva Oltaj and this was the second book in the series. I loved the first book um, and I didn't really know what else to read and I wanted something like dark I feel like so um, I picked this one up and this one follows Bianca and she is part of the Italian Mafia and she is mute because she has sustained damage to her vocal cords so she can't speak or if she does speak it causes her a lot of pain and she basically gets put into an arranged marriage with a man called Mikhail who is part of the Bratva and he is an older gentleman and he's very scarred and he looks very scary everyone sort of tries to avoid him um everyone thinks he's super grumpy she gets put into an arranged marriage with him and it's basically about them sort of going about the arranged marriage he has a really sweet younger daughter or like little daughter she's not very old um there's sprinkling sprinklings of mafia and like bratva in there too like dealings um it was good it wasn't super dark i really liked it it was a dark mafia arranged marriage age gap and single parent those were the tropes and it was also in Kindle Unlimited. I read so much stuff on Kindle Unlimited at this point, sorry. And the next book that I read was By Fate I Conquer by Cora Riley. This is the third, I think, or the fourth, no, this is, I think, the fourth book in the Sins of Our Fathers series. Um, and this one follows Greta, who is the daughter of Remo and Serafina. And it also follows Amo, who is the son of Luca and Aria. So that's the parents. It's basically follows the kids it's that that sort of a series it follows the children series uh but do you need to read the other series to understand this series in all honesty i would say yes um equally like no but yes because i think it's a bit confusing at points um if you if you, there's so many side characters and you'd be like who the frig are all these people um if you hadn't read the other books so i don't really know i don't know if you'd be all that interested either if you hadn't read the other books uh anyway i'll tell you a bit of what it's about it follows a uh, greta who's part obviously of the vegas mafia and um she's very shy very introverted uh she does ballet she basically by chance meets ammo who is going to be the capo of the new york mafia and he has already been like arranged to marry another woman uh but he meets greta and they sort of start to fall for each other and then it's set after his marriage and like they're having i suppose an affair because he is married but he doesn't love the woman and he's never wanted to be with the woman and etc etc um and it's sort of forbidden because they shouldn't be together because it's like well they can't really be together all this sort of stuff so it's I don't know how to describe this one if I'm honest. I don't know how to describe my feelings of this if I'm honest as well. I liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. I did like it. It felt a lot more like Cora's old writing, uh, which I really liked. Uh, I don't particularly like the forbidden trope in general because I'm just annoyed. I just want them just be together. Just be together. Like, I just get annoyed at points. Like, I just, can you just guys just be together? Like, I'm just... <laughs> like, I'm over it. Um, but, so I don't really love that trope. The other reason I get four stars, if I'm completely honest, was that there are a lot of things that, like, were just a bit confusing. Like, Greta has a lot of dogs, but half the times the dogs would change from he to she, or she to he, and then back again in just a matter of a few sentences and like equally i don't give a toss about what genders the dogs are like i truly don't give a toss but my whole point is that I, it's just the continuity of it um, and the consistency of it so i don't i didn't really love that um and i don't know i'm pretty sure coral is german i don't know if that's like a, a 
I don't know because I know some languages don't actually have genders so um I don't know if that is a thing my second point is also the reason why I didn't give five stars was because when there's a lot of people in the scene and you're reading it it got so confusing as to who was speaking there were so many times I'd read a scene I'd be like I don't actually know who's talking um yeah because there were just so many characters involved there were a lot a lot a lot of characters in this book um so yeah that can get quite overwhelming as well if you haven't read any of the other series any other books in the series or previous series so anyway that was just but i did enjoy it otherwise it sounds like i'm moaning a lot i really did enjoy it um it was also on kindle unlimited so that's good it's also forbidden it's quite dark and it's a mafia trope okay the next book and the second and final dnf of this month was Sincerely the Puck Bunny by Mara Moore. Um, it wasn't badly written, just to clarify, as always. Um, my biggest umbrage was that I read 20% and it took 20% for them to, like, I don't know, be doing whatever they were doing. And then I was already slightly skimming that 20% because I was like, well, when is she going to be pregnant? Because it's meant to be like a pregnancy trope. Um, and I didn't even like the 20% of them being together, so... I thought I went like the other eighty percent of them being together, so I was like, I'll I will give this a miss. I liked Mara Moore's other book that she wrote that I read. I can't remember what it was called. In the next book and the final book that I read, and these were two rereads. It was Twisted Emotions and Twisted Bonds by Cora Riley. I picked these up because I read by Fate I Conquer, and it just really reminded me of how good Cora Riley is. Um, and these are the second and fourth books. I'm pretty sure, yeah in the uh Kamara chronicles and these are this is a series of the parents and then the sins of our fathers is a series of the kids basically um and basically it follows kira and nino and kira gets put into an arranged marriage she has a lot of trauma she has a lot of things that have happened to her um and basically those two books about them sort of coming together being together being married um that it's just some of my favorite book some of my favorite books so rather just i love those books so much um that i just really, really wanted to reread them um and i couldn't recommend those books more if you like a mafia trope those are like my favorite books ever um yeah it's they're both on kindle limited but i've got like the kimura collections i'm pretty sure i bought them as the volumes um it's also dark it's mafia and it's arranged marriage um, so those are all the books that I read this month. Thank you so much for watching. We shall speak soon. If you could like, if you could subscribe, I'd be greatly appreciative. Um, if you could comment some of your favourite books of the year, any books that you read this month, any books that you just want to talk about, I'd love to know. And finally, I hope you have a good New Year's, um, because I don't know when I'm going to post this in all honesty. But I hope you guys have a good New Year's. And we shall speak soon. And goodbye.